With the highs and lows of the tumultuous release and triumphant post-launch successes of Hello Games' science fiction opus No Man's Sky now four years in the rearview mirror, I wanted to take a look at a different mirror that perhaps helped to serve as an inspiration for that much debated and much hyped space exploration sim. Santa Region's 2013 Mirror Moon EP. Where No Man's Sky is a more straight-up exploration game of gorgeous and awe-inspiring vistas and dotted with occasionally agonizing survival and combat mechanics, Mirror Moon is a delightfully obtuse exploration and puzzle game, closer in tone to Mist than No Man's Sky. Inspired by the works of French science fiction artist Mobius, American architect Labius Woods, Italian illustrator Gabriel Brombin, Russian filmmaker Andrei Tarkovsky, and Italian game developer Alessandro Gignola, Mirror Moon is a game first and foremost about discovery. Originally made for 2012's Global Game Jam, Mirror Moon is a game without tutorials. And not just tutorials, hardly any explanation of any kind. Every aspect of the game, apart from the player controls, needs to be discovered by the player. Alessandro Gignola's seminal indie series Noctis, particularly the most recent title Noctis 4, served as a key gameplay inspiration for Mirror Moon. The Noctis games put the player in charge of a starship and give that player near unlimited freedom to travel the galaxy and catalog their discoveries. Santa Region studio director Pietro Riva said that Santa Region wanted to take the exploration and mystery of Noctis and make something more of it. It's an extremely obtuse game, so in a way, Mirror Moon is like Candy Crush Saga compared to it. But we could tell there was a pleasure in not understanding how to operate the spaceship. It's very similar to the experience of playing your first flight simulator on computer. It would take me an hour and a half just to start the thing. And there's a beauty in that. In a 2014 GDC postmortem on Mirror Moon, Rigariva put forth that it was this thirst for knowledge and understanding that is the defining aspect of true science fiction stories. Science fiction author Judith Merrill postulated sci-fi as stories whose objective is to explore, to discover, to learn something about the nature of the universe or man or reality. This focus on discovery is integral to the world of Mirror Moon. Mirror Moon begins by dropping you into a very unorthodox spaceship interior, which appears to be an equal mix of interior and exterior all at once, and you'll begin your expedition by first just turning on your machine. Built to mirror the Nostromo boot-up sequence of Ridley Scott's Alien, none of the buttons you're pushing or switches you're flicking have an immediately obvious use or purpose, pushing players, in the words of Riga to attribute their own meaning to the machinery and to the controls. Rigariva further revealed that this discovery was one the team needed to make as well, as they designed the physical console before deciding what each button and switch would do in-game. Descending to the planet requires inserting a special cartridge into your spaceship's console. Inserting this cartridge beams you down to the surface of a red planet. In the sky above you is a red moon. Take a few steps toward the horizon and you'll discover that the moon is your mini-map, as a tiny representation of yourself moves across the moon in lockstep with your enigmatic explorer. The title of the game is less than subtle. Now, while Noctis and its quest for knowledge guided what Mirror Moon was hoping to be, the aesthetic sensibilities of Mobius Woods and Tarkovsky guided how Mirror Moon would look. Santa Region brought in Italian illustrator Gabriel Brombin to conceptualize the worlds and architecture of Mirror Moon, and it's these concepts that give the universe of Mirror Moon a wholly organic feel. Tarkovsky's Solaris would also guide the minimalist feel and alien nature of many of Mirror Moon's planets, but beyond just drawing inspiration from Tarkovsky's interpretation of Solaris, much of Mirror Moon's, quote, fictional consistency came from studying the work of Solaris author Stanislaw Lem. Regeriva had this to say about Lem's 1958 novel Eden. It's a very interesting book about understanding and exploration, and in a way I'd say it's very connected to Mirror Moon, and to the very idea of exploring something not because you want to go back, to save yourself, but just for the sake of understanding. Every planet in Mirror Moon is a puzzle filled with puzzles, and it's your job as explorer of the galaxy to solve the puzzle of each planet as a series of stepping stones to reveal the greater puzzle that is the galaxy itself. This is the gamey part of Mirror Moon's quest for discovery. 
But while the opening planet of the game is, as the developers put it, an authored puzzle, the rest of the planets you'll encounter are procedural, dotted with a handful of puzzles you'll become intimately familiar with over the course of your journey. And though the rest of the galaxy is generated and populated randomly, Santa Region designed it to reflect aspects of our real universe. Sometimes you'll land on a planet with absolutely nothing on it. This is by design. Rigiriva discussed their galactic construction this way. The moon is sort of the protagonist of your adventures on the planets, which is why sometimes there's no moon. But what happens now? It was exciting for us to play with those very limited numbers of pieces because it meant we could really explore what it felt like changing one thing, taking it away from the player. What if you don't have it anymore? What if there's a planet where you move the moon and the sky is still very dark because the star is not very powerful? We balanced nothingness in the universe with respect to actual discoveries. One complaint we get from time to time is how there are a lot of planets that are completely empty. In reality, it's a very small number compared to everything else the players can discover in the universe, and the actual number of empty planets in the real world. And it is the absolute minimum we could go with to give meaning to the discoveries. In other words, to make discovering the artifacts and architecture exciting, we had to make them rare occurrences. Now, while you're exploring the universe alone, from the all-at-once interior and exterior of your spaceship, Mirror Moon is, in a loose sense, also a multiplayer game. You're not the only explorer in this universe. When you solve a planet's puzzle, you're able to name the planet, and soon you'll discover yourself landing on planets that have already been solved and already been named by other mysterious explorers, perhaps moments before you landed, or eons ago. You'll soon realize that your journey is leading you towards an anomaly, somewhere out in the vast reaches of space that dominate your view. I won't say too much else for fear of spoiling your own experience with the game, but Mirror Moon is really something else. Rarely has a game drawn me in like Mirror Moon and buried itself in my brain so profoundly. If you find yourself yearning for discovery, boot up Mirror Moon. Hey everybody, this is Jake Terrio with Subpixel. If you've made it this far, hopefully it means you enjoyed that video that you just watched. So if you could leave a like and a comment and subscribe if you're not subscribed already, that lets us and our robot overlords at YouTube know that this video is worth watching. So thank you for that, and we'll see you next time.